Welcome back to my darkroom. Today we're going to see if we can tame some of the ultra-fine ortholith film for general photography. Now I know it's been a while since we've been in the darkroom. Things going on in life have just kept me from making videos as regularly as I would like to, but hopefully we can get back on track. So I use ultra-fine ortholith film for making masks in the darkroom for black and white work, but when it comes to general photography, it is a very high contrast film. It's also very, very slow, and it's only sensitive to blue. It makes it difficult to use, to say the least. But I wanted to be able to use it for maybe special projects, because it is really cheap. And you can get it from Ultrafine all the way from 35 millimeter up through 20 by 24 sheets. So no matter what format you use, it's available. Arista does have its own uh, through Freestyle, the Arista Ortholith version 3, I believe. And it's a very, very similar film, but it is different. Um, it's not just repackaged of the same type. So there are going to be some differences if you want to use that film with these instructions you might find you have to tweak some things. Now, before we get too far into it, I do want to say, for those of you that support this channel through Patreon, that company has been going through some weird shifts uh, recently, and I've been considering for a while of dropping Patreon and using YouTube's support system instead. So if you are a supporter through Patreon, I'm actually going to ask you to cancel your membership support for this channel. And I'm going to work on getting the tiers moved over to YouTube's support system. So if you wanna still support this channel, we're gonna move over there. Um, if you're looking to support the channel, don't go to Patreon. I'm gonna drop that link, I'm gonna close that account, I'm not gonna use that anymore. Uh, okay, so back on track here. The work that I'm doing with this film is taken from uh, a young lady who has been working on this uh, a couple years ago. She made a really good article on her blog. The blog is called Grainy Vision. The young lady, um, Ashley Houston, put a lot of work into creating a formula that increases the speed of the film uh, and also tried a few different developers to see what would come out with the best gradation. So starting with that, I took some 4x5, loaded it up in the camera, took it outside on just a regular sunny day, and did a test exposure using a film speed of 0 0.8, so less than one. A third of a stop, less than one, uh, to be to be specific and then developed this in my standard film developer of PMK Pyro, which happens to be the same developer that she found gave the best gradation at native film speed for Arista. And the results were very, very promising. So using just the Sunny 16 rule, I came up with an exposure of one and a third second at F16, translated that shooting wide open. I believe it got about an eighth of a second at 5.6. And it came out pretty good. You can see the results here. I'm getting pretty good gradation, good shadow detail, and it turned out pretty well. I'm, I'm pleased with the results. So if I'm going to go out and do some landscape work and try to shoot the film exactly at its native speed, this is what I would do. Yes, it's very slow. It's going to be. She did, however, create a formula for a pre-bath that would raise the speed up. With her findings, she got Arista up to a speed of about 25. Uh, I found with the Ultrafine, 12 was about it. However, I didn't use it for outdoor shots in the sun. It could be faster at 25 with that. Instead, I moved into the studio. And the first thing I wanted to do was just try a native speed, 0 0.8, with my strobes. And I found 
that the strobes and the soft boxes that I used did not give a 0 0.8 speed. It was much, much slower than that. So I'm going to say with this film being so blue sensitive, the soft boxes in particular just absorbed too much of that light and I would need a much more powerful light than what I was using. I was using two 500 watt second pro photo heads, fairly close with soft boxes, but uh, it just absorbed so much blue that the film came out almost completely blank. That is what prompted me to try the speed enhancing pre-bath. And so I've got the formula right down in the description. If you would like to read her blog article on it, which is pretty in-depth, I'm going to have a link to that as well. So you can go to that and get more information if you're interested. So using that, I then tested out 25 because that was what she was getting with Arista and found that I actually need to go a little bit slower down to 12, but I could still use my two heads for lighting. So the other thing I was kind of testing was a little bit of lighting setup for a potential future project. And I, I like the work of Martin Schuller. So his lighting is very straightforward. It's two strip lights at 45 degree angles, um, fairly close. So it's just a, a, an even light coming in, almost like a copy stand light. So very flat, very even. Uh, the size soft boxes I'm using are one foot or 12 inches by three feet. And I feel like I probably need to go bigger once we I saw the results. And the lighting's all right. It works okay. But as you can see, when you start getting this ortholith film on flesh tones, you can definitely see like all the moles, all the freckles, all the uh, the blemishes really stand out. That's kind of what this ortho film does. Uh, much like the old wet plates from uh, the 18th or 1800s, 19th century, because it's not reflecting back on the reddish parts of my skin. And so it creates this very dramatic look. My wife kind of uh, said it looked like old time photographs of miners. <laughs> so um, miners is in coal mines. Uh, and I, I agree. I think it, it does look kind of like that. Uh, I do like the lighting. I'm going to work on that a little bit in the future. Um, I've got some soft box, uh, strip light soft boxes that are a little bit bigger, about a foot and a half by five feet. And I'm going to try that again and see if I can get a little bit different look. Also, this is a 150 millimeter lens on four by five. That is typically a normal perspective. But once you get more to this, not quite, but starting to get macro, it is um, giving kind of that wide angle distortion. So I may try this again with a 210 lens in the future, and we'll, we'll perhaps make a video about that later. Um, but trying to just get a little bit more even light. I think I may have had it too close, and having it too small and too close, what that ended up doing was creating hot spots where I'm getting a little bit of um, a little bit of effect from the inverse square law. So this is brighter than this, which is brighter than this, because the light is so close. So using the larger softbox, I should be able to move that out and maybe get a little bit more even lighting. Looking at videos of Scholler working, he is using fairly large panels, probably about two feet wide and six feet tall. So I think if I use bigger lights a little bit further back, I might get a little bit more even lighting, and we'll try that again later. And I may try it on FOMA just as a panchromatic to see if it's the lighting or the film. So we'll see. However, using this pre-bath and using a standard film developer at a little bit higher dilution, I used um, D72 at one to three. So one part stock to three parts water. 
Uh, I got a development time in the three to four minute range and it worked pretty well. I will say, however, that pre-bath does raise the speed up enough that I was getting fogging from my red safe light filter. I was using a Kodak Rattan 1A red safe light filter, which is typically safe for this film. And the first test outside with the native film speed was perfectly fine. But when I used this pre-bath, it raised the speed so much that I was actually fogging the film while I was in the developer tray. So I switched to a dark red Rattan number two filter and it eliminated the fogging. If you're using an LED light, you may be fine. It may be sharp enough cutting that you're okay. Uh, because remember, a Rattan Kodak filter is just filtering a standard light bulb. So it's cutting out all that excess light. They may still be coming through enough that it is fogging. So I would suggest doing some tests and see. I decided then to maybe change my light up a little bit just to see what would happen. So getting rid of the two soft boxes, I changed to a single beauty light. You can see from the light here, it's directly above the camera at about a 45 degree angle. So you get that nice little beauty light, that beauty dish. And again, dramatic light fall off because the light's fairly close. So I'm getting very bright highlights through here and it falls off pretty quick. Very dramatic shadows. And with a very dramatic lighting like that, I found that the D72 developer was, or D76 developer, I'm sorry, was just too much. Even cutting the time down, I could not get a good gradation. That high contrast really started to seep in. So switching back to my PMK, still using the pre-bath, I found that a developing time of three minutes worked pretty well. PMK uh, of course, if you don't want to use a pyro, you can use maybe a very dilute type developer like HC110, uh, Rodanol, something like that. Something where you can dilute it quite a bit and still have good activity so that it can um, develop the shadows well without overdeveloping the highlights because that's really the, uh, the danger of this film. The PMK worked well, as you can see here, uh, versus the D76, but I found that I had to use a very short time, three minutes, which with a developer like PMK where it's staining and so active, it can lead to some developing blemishes. You can see that in that spot above my head and trying to dilute it and extend the time didn't, didn't make any difference in that regard. So, it's a, a very short developing time, and I may need to do some more tests. Of course, it could just be that's such a high contrast situation, I may not be able to get that. Uh, I did use a white reflector under my chin, but again, the light might just be too close to create too much of a highlight, and if I back off, I may get a little bit better result. So these are mostly just some tests for maybe some future portrait work that I'm thinking of, but also with this film and developer combination. I do find if you're going to do portrait work with this stuff, uh, if you don't have really, really powerful lights, and I do, I've got some uh, Speedatron 2400 packs and um, some heads, so I could have a lot of light come in, then the film's just natively too slow. So speed it up, you can use this pre-bath, uh, using it fairly simple, in my case, I'm using trays in my sink here, but if you're doing roll film in a can, same instructions. Do a pre-rinse like you would any film. Go into this pre-bath, three minutes, constant, vigorous agitation. Rinse it off. Then your developer stop fix. And it works really, really well. So you're just going to need three ingredients. You need to get some TEA. I buy mine from Artcraft Chemicals. Works just fine. Uh, potassium bromide, again, our craft, easy to get, you'll need to weigh it out. And then some potassium iodide. So I get that again from our craft, bought all three from there. And you're just going to uh, make a 1% solution of the iodide and then mix it in the ratio 
to that formula down in the description. So pretty straightforward, easy to use. It keeps well, keeps it in a small dark bottle in the dark and you'll be fine. It, it seems to last for a very, very long time. Use it very sparingly, one part stock to 30 parts water and it works. Works really well, a little too well if you're using a Bryce Safe Light. So just keep that in mind. So these were a couple of tests, a couple of things I tried. I recommend if you want to try this film out, do so. Again, if you're out in the sun and you can handle the slow speed, PMK worked really, really well. I know some people don't like handling pyro, so maybe something like HC110 at a dilu strong dilution, um, or a weak dilution, high dilution, whatever you want to call it, or rotanol. See what you get there. Paper developers are a little too active and they tend to make it very, very grainy. So the film developer worked really, really well. But if you're going to do something in the studio and you just want to get uh, faster speed or even outdoors faster speed, this pre-bath formula works surprisingly well. I do recommend you try it. It's fun film to play around with. It's cheap film to play around with. But you are going to get some weird effects, particularly with skin, but I still think it's worth playing around with at that price. So get out there, make some photographs. If you'd like to help support this channel, you can get shirts like this one here. You can get lab towels. You can go to the super thanks down at the bottom of these videos and just help support the channel directly without any purchases if you don't need anything. So we do appreciate you watching. We do appreciate your support and we'll see you next time.